This is Evangelist Isaac Leham and Israel Leham, and welcome to the Fire Within Studios. We hope that this program will be a blessing for your soul. Now let's get started with inspiring truth talk. Hey, welcome to the Voice of Evangelism with um, Isaac and Israel. I hope everyone, like I always say every time, I hope everyone's blessed because I really want you to be blessed. I want you to be abundantly blessed uh, 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 spiritually, first of all, uh, emotionally, and physically, of course, with your health. And um, Israel, Amen. how are you doing today? You look good. good. You look uh, good. You, you look really good. Good, good. Thank you. Well, I've been trying to watch what I eat because uh, uh, being at home, you tend to gain a lot of weight with this um, lockdown. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm just trying to watch what I eat, but uh, also I've been um, riding my bike with the boys and just getting a little workout. That's good. I like that. Yeah, I like I like that you guys are you, you do that with the the kids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's still we still have sort of like a lockdown here in um, Los Angeles. Um, all fifty states have reopened, um, uh, partially. There's still you know the thing going with the church and uh, you know the governor here in California, Governor Democratic Governor Newsom said that he he gave some guidelines where churches could open up 25 percent of the congregation or 100 people but i've read that you know you can't be no worshiping as far as singing or if there's a choir that type of deal so i don't know how churches are going to do it that have more than 100 people uh, maybe they have to have multiple services but um the casinos have opened up and there's more than 100 people there and i mean right. i know they're going to say well they're big and they, it's different obviously you know it's not something that um the guidelines are not fair for, you know, okay, from going to church to having a business, going to Walmart, going to Target, where there's a right. lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, it's not fair. I mean, uh, they just want to roll everything out um, that has to do anything with God. But let's all remember that God is a just for God, and God will make justification at the end. Exactly. And I, looking at this, I know pastors, you know, and we should follow, you know, the law, but only according to if the law is uh, something that we should follow. Like, you know, if there's something like, you know, people coming knocking on your door, just an example, I'm just saying, speaking as an example, and they come knocking on your door and you, um, they say, okay, you know, we want to know if there's any Christian people in there because we want to take them to jail or persecute them uh, as an example, because that's what's happening in China. Well, you're not going to do that because, you know, there's certain things that you're not going to do that if, because there's some, there's some crazy laws out there. You know, right. there's some laws that are just uh, ridiculous that people pass and go, how did this pass? Or how is this even legal? You know, that are yeah. just ridiculous that people don't know until they experience some kind of a hardship because they got arrested or because they got ticketed. Right. So yeah, there's a lot of people who want to use their power that are in government and to be a uh, tyrannical government. So today we want to talk about a really good subject because as you know, um, um, our podcast is called the voice of evangelism and we go out and evangelize at, and Israel and I have gone out to the parks before this and to different places. And we would go and pass out tracks and do that old school um, evangelism. And we, when we talk to people, some people, uh, you know, say, uh, you know, either they don't believe in God or other people that say they do. But a lot of people, when we ask them like, okay, do you think you're going to be able, you're going to go to heaven if you die? Well, a lot of people say they are. They say they don't go to church. They say, I'm a good person. I'm going to go to heaven. They say, I never committed this a great sin where I've killed anyone. So, yes, I think I'll right. go to heaven and help out. The majority, people. right? The majority, right, Israel? Yeah. And the thing is that, in, in a way, that is a true statement. Everyone's going to go to he heaven, but not everyone's going to be able to stay and live mm -hmm. there in heaven. Yeah. Right? You're right, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll, you know, I, I agree because. We're all going to get a, a, either a glimpse of heaven or a taste of heaven, but we're not going to, uh, not everyone's going to stay there. And that right there, it's when everybody's going to have the last, I mean, they're going to want to repent, but it's going to be too late. God gives us so much many opportunities while we're here on earth. Um, you know, you, you can have an opportunity right now, this very second, this very minute, this, this very day or in the coming days, but people just reject the Lord and they don't want to go ahead and, um, you know, follow him. They don't want to accept him. And that's what leads you to, to hell because there is a hell, just like there's a heaven, there's a hell and there 
right there, all the people that did not accept God, they will be cast in the lake and of fire. Of people, exactly. And a lot of people that I've talked to, they say, well, I'm a good person. So they say because they, people think that because they are good, that they're going to go to heaven. But they don't understand it because it's like if you are uh, – so we got we to gotta go ahead and explain it. So mm -hmm. – God is a holy God that God does not, he is not where there is sin. He can't be where there is sin because he is holy. Everyone agrees right. with that or most right. people that everyone that believes in God, God is holy. And the, the uh, sin is something that God hates. God hates that. It's horrible for him. He does not like sin because he is holy. So right. the way you look at it is that, God is the, uh, he put uh, the moral law, like, you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not uh, commit adultery, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, the Ten Commandments. He put that in everyone's heart because some people say, well, you know what, um, you don't need God to know that, but how do you know? God is the one that put that in everyone's heart right. uh, because you could live in a remote island or a place where there's a tribe and they probably have not heard about Jesus, but they know what's right and what's wrong because even that tribe that maybe does not hear Jesus about Jesus, like you, people hear it here, like due to the internet, through the TV, because they don't have a TV or technology, they know that if they go to one of the village members and they steal something, I could be an animal, maybe like a, a livestock, like goat, you know, that they need to eat or whatever. Right. You know, that's wrong. They know I'm stealing this from someone and that's wrong. So that's the moral code. If they yeah. kill someone, you know, they live in this island, they know that it's wrong. That, and so the reason I'm saying this is because that is sin and, and, and sin with the Holy God is a crime. It is a crime against, against God because he is holy because he, you said you broke the moral law. You're not supposed to do this. So how many, how may, how can anyone say that they're good enough to go to heaven? It is only by the grace of God. And I know you're going to touch on this, that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that we may be saved. And people are not going to go to heaven because they they are good or they are good works. Right? Yeah, but they're going to go to heaven because they accepted Jesus Christ and for who right, he right. is and what he stands for. A true follower, a righteous person is going to go to heaven because God is looking for someone that is righteous without sin or blemish. I mean, that's hard. I know as human beings, it's hard to to do um, the right in spiritual life, to live a spiritual life. Because we're we're you know we we're flesh and we get weak we get tempted we get uh, angry upset uh, we have thoughts in our that cross our mind but um that's that's why God uh, came to die for our sins uh, to and so for us give us an opportunity for us to for, uh, ask him for forgiveness of those sins exactly and that's the thing and so it's like the so everyone is gonna go to heaven everyone. Everyone and people may be saying, okay, well, you know, everyone's going to, but there's a difference. Like I said, there's a difference between going to heaven and, and staying and living in the presence of the Lord, right. uh, living and staying in heaven, living in the presence of the Lord, because the Bible says, and I know you have some scriptures too. Um, the Bible says in Hebrews nine twenty seven, it says it is appointed for men to, to die once, but after this, the, there is judgment. There is a, the judgment day. Right. And that is where people will realize that not, they will have been in heaven um, right. or have had that glimpse of heaven that you said. But then there is that in the judgment day, the great white throne, they will realize that they will not stay in heaven and live in heaven. Right, right. Another scripture I would like to recite is in Revelation 20. It's uh, from 12 to 13. It says, we learn about the people at the great white throne. I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. The sea gave up the dead who were in it and the death, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in it. That is when all the sinners and those who did not follow Christ will be judged at the great white throne. And that's when they're going to want to repent, but it will be too late. I, I, I don't want like to put it in these words, but uh, it's going to be like, you know, uh, some people say this in this in this earth. Oh, well, you can go to hell you know, saying that in those terms, but that's how it's going to be. And God is going to cast you away into a lake of fire and just going to send you to hell. I mean, it, it might sound cruel, but it's true because it's where you're going if you're not a follower of Christ. Right. And God did not make hell for um, his creation, his people, the people, humanity. 
he made it for the devil and his demons. And it's because, uh, but the people who reject Jesus Christ are the life who have said, I don't want a relationship with God. I want to be very religious, for example. There's a lot of religions going to be one of the things that's going to take more people to hell. The Pharisees, because of the religious acts and views, they crucified Jesus Christ. And what you read about in Revelation 20, that the sea is going to give up their dead, that death and Hades is going to give up the dead. That means going back to the sea, that every person who has died at, at the hands of the ocean or of the sea from the great flood, Noah's time of flood, all the people that were not in the ark that died, that rejected and laughed at Noah, that mm -hmm. died and said, we don't believe in you. We don't believe in what you're saying, that they will be, they will rise up. And once they will rise up and be in the presence of the Lord for that day, the, the great white throne, the day of judgment and the great white throne. It's not a place that you want to be. It might sound like, oh, well, it's great. The words are great and it's white and it's a throne. Mm -hmm. What's well, a place where God is at? Well, God will be there, but he will leave the judgment to Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the one that died for the world. Right. So the thing is that it's a place that you do not want to be there. No. There's not one person who is saved, not one believer who, who will be there. Um, they will be at another place, which is the judgment seat of Christ, which is, I believe, in the book of Corinthians. That is where the judgment seat of Christ will be for those who have believed Jesus Christ, who those who have come to accept Jesus Christ, who, who those, what you said, Israel, have lived a righteous life, have had a relationship, they will be there. But at the great white throne, you do not want to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is so true. I mean, I, I also want to point out that those that they call themselves Christians, but they not follow Christ, they only serve God the way they wanted to serve him and not the way God wants us to serve him. In other words, I, I'm talking about someone that's a hypocrite, I would say. They, they, there they would be judged because in Matthew 7, 21 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And that's how those who did not follow Christ will be judge and the lord was pretty part into the lake of fire i mean i remember i i want to share a little story from our mom that she she would be an awesome woman making uh, plays at church and she made a play about this uh this subject the great white throne uh -huh. and i remember i i i've seen it uh, i was in the audience i was a little kid and uh, it touched me because some of the people that portrayed the actors they it touched me because they were actually like pretending acting but they were like in agony that they were sent in the in the uh to the lake of fire but it, i know it's just a play but it did touch me because um um it, it was just uh, something awesome to see that you know with the angels and uh and the book of life um i and i know you were there you witnessed this i don't remember yeah. if you were in the play i think you were but it was an awesome experience. i think i was in the background uh with the 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 special effects and I kind of messed up on one of the nights and uh, I was a hesitation, <laughs> but no one knew because, but all of us that rehearsed it knew and I go, Oh my gosh, Isaac, hurry up. You know, you messed up, you know, it was like a five second delay, but yeah, I was there, but yeah, I, that was, she did a good job and that's be, not because she's our, she's, she was our mother, but it's because it was good. And a lot of people, it got packed. I remember they did it for two nights and it got yeah. packed. People loved it and it was great. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I guess we, we have some creativity, you know, that comes from her from our dad too. Uh, yeah. But you're right. The thing is that going back to the scripture that you said about Revelations 20, that the sea will give up its dead. And that means every, like I said, people that died at the flood, the great red flood during the time of Noah, the people, the man, Pharaoh's army that were chasing the Israelites to bring them back to Egypt, that when the sea parted and then they, God let them crawl, go through the, through the uh, dryness of the sea with their chariots, the, the Pharaoh's army. But then he closed the sea again. He united the waves again. All those, all those uh, will be there. They die. Everyone whose ashes, who did not have a righteous life, who did not look for Jesus Christ, who did not want to have a relationship with him, and their ashes were spread to the sea, will also be there in the presence of the Lord on that day of the great white throne, the, the judgment day. And right. even, like you said, the death, and Hades. So that means that all of the, all of the dead people, death, all of the the dead, death itself will say, Lord, by His commands, says, "Here are all the dead people who have died from the very beginning." The Pharisees, 
who crucified Jesus Christ, the Romans who crucified Jesus Christ, right. all of those will be there. And right. also Hades. And Hades is a place where people are, are at right now in the place of torment, in, in that place of torment right now, not in the presence of the Lord, but they will also be there. Uh, they will come out. It's actually like hell. They're, they're in hell and they will be. So yeah. I, I, there's only one time and when people will come out of hell. And that will be the only one time where people come out of hell to be in the judgment day so that the Lord could go ahead and read the books. And we're going to go into the books right now. So what were you going to say? Because I, I thought you were going to say something right now. I mean, I, mean, I know I, everything you're saying, it's 100%. Um, uh, I agree with all of it because God gave us so many chances, so many opportunities to repent on while we're still on this earth living and to look for him in order that we could have a relationship with him you know, to get closer to him and in order that we can know him because God is a, God, uh, he's a merciful God and he loves us so much that, you know, although we, we might sin, you know, as, a, as Christians also, we, we, we sin, uh, we could sin, but he, he uh, forgives of, of our sins. Uh, I mean, I know every day uh, it's a challenge to, to live uh, in this, in this life, in this world. And, um, but, just one little prayer to God. Say, God, forgive me, you know, from the bottom of my heart. I ask you to forgive me, please, Lord, because I want to be ready for if you come for your church or if I depart from this earth, I'm ready to go with you. Um, please forgive me of everything that I've done that that doesn't um, that you didn't um, approve that 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 was a sin a sinful way of me handling things. No, absolutely. And there's you know, like you said, uh, repentance and. It's like if people, if you don't repent uh, of your sins is um, true repentance. Like I was, I was watching this uh, thing before we did this podcast and we talked about this subject about someone asking uh, someone is suicide, you know, can you commit suicide and still go to heaven? Like if you, if you're a Christian and the person there, you know, um, said, kind of said, well, yeah, God forgives his gives sins. But the thing is that a lot of the people that were commenting on it, they said, well, no, because it's self-murder. We talked about that. Well, you have to have, how can you repent if you already died? You can't say, some, some, from, someone wrote on the comments that, well, before you put the sh- pull, you know, pull the trigger, you could say, God, please forgive me. I repent. Well, that is, not, that is not true repentance. That's like, you know, the man who is raping a woman and saying, oh, God, forgive me. I'm raping this woman right now. It doesn't make sense. You're not repenting. You're doing the act, which is the act of sin. So yeah. there's people when we go and evangelize and we talk to people that um, or you heard people say, well, you know, I heard people say, well, you know what? I don't need God. You know, I don't want to live with God. I want to live in hell and, you know, bring hell. I've heard people say that, you know, I, I bring hell to me. I want to live in hell. Yeah. But if that person does not repent, when the books are open, we're going to get into books right now. When the books are open and the Lord and, and the angels bring the books and they say, okay, Right here, you said that you did not need God and you wanted hell. That is going to be written right there. Right, right. That's true. I mean, right there. And then, um, you know, our, every every time, well, I wanted to put it this way. Um, once you accept God, your name is written in the book of life. And right there, your, your, your name is there. It's already marked on that book. And you're, you're, you're a child of God. So right there, you're, you have your entrance into heaven. But those, like you said, that say, I want to go to hell, it's because they don't know how bad it is, how, what, what the torture it's going to be. It's going to be a fire that doesn't consume. It's going to be a fire that's just going to be forever all going. You're going to be in agony. You're going to want to die, but you already would be, you know, your body's going to be dead, but you're going to want to, because you're going to be suffering. Your soul's going to be alive, suffering. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. And the thing is that, and I'm going to get into why people say that. And, and right now we're living in the, in the moment of, uh, of um, where, where grace or uh, permissible or permit, permit, permission where God allows certain things because you see all the things that happen, you know, crimes and so forth. Right. And you say, well, why, you know, God is good. What is this? God allows it to happen. So a person could go ahead and, you know, commit a crime. A person could go ahead and sin over and over again and, you know, not, you know, there's the, 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 there, the consequence of sin is death, but there's also consequence of sin here before death where you 
do something and, you know, you get arrested and so forth. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people, um, when they sin, they do other sins that are not, like, let's say it's not murder, it's not um, something horrible, like let's say rape again or child molestation, which is something horrible, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, But there's other sins where people get away with it uh, because it wasn't at that level. Um, it's because you're, we're living in that permission state and that state of grace. And what I wanted to go is because the people – what you read about Matthew is that, you know, what God would say, depart from me. I never knew you. It's because after that people, that what's going to happen is that the second death will come. So you're going to die physically, but you, your the second death as your death spiritually, where your spirit from God is going to be separated for all eternity, for right. all forever and ever. Right. And what I, I was telling a friend of mine about this. And I said, look, to be separated from God, it's one of the most horrible things because that means that the one who gave you life, um, you're going to be separated. God is light and you're going to be in total darkness. So those who say, oh, I want to live. It's okay. You know, I want to live in hell. I embrace hell. I don't want to live with God. Every murderer will be there that did not repent. Every horrible person, every demon, every horrible thing that a person has done, every vile act, Every person that, you know, everything that you've seen that scared you, that, that just moves, shaking your spirit, that you've seen the most horrible thing that has happened to humanity, who person who did not repent, all those acts, all those people will be there. And the right. person who says that does not realize that that is where they will go if they're not, they do not repent. Right, right. And I want to point this out that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Yeah. It, the Bible clearly, clearly tells us in Philippians 2, 9 through 11, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. to the glory of God the Father. No one will get away without bending their knees to the Lord because we will all be either worshiping him or we will be, Lord, forgive me, but it will be too late for those that will be asking for repentance because we're all going to be bowing down to God. Every man, woman, and child, every um, rich person, white person, everybody, uh, they will all go ahead and um, even the devil and demons will bow every knee, uh, every tongue. None will be perfect, practically looking at ourselves or looking, oh, I told you so, but we are all going to be with our heads down worshiping God or asking to please, Lord, for help us or forgive us. And that will be too late for those that didn't accept it. Exactly. And, you know, you're right, because even here on earth and the Bible, it says that when going back on, you know, the demons bound to God, uh, if we remember that scripture, um, I think it's uh, Luke 8, um, when Jesus calmed the storm and then they went to the other side of the lake. And there was a demon-possessed man, and he came running. He used to live in the caves, and he was naked, this demon-possessed man. And when he came, he ran running to Jesus. And what was the thing that he did? One of the first things he did was he knelt down because the demons knew who Jesus was. They knew his awesomeness. They even said, you are, they, even, they recognized you are the Son of God. Yeah. And yeah. If, demons, yeah. if demons kneel down to Jesus Christ, if sickness kneels down at the name of Jesus, if uh, cancer, if any disease, anything kneels down with the authority of the name of Jesus, you know, then man should do the same. And there is no escape. Man will go ahead and kneel down and say, truly, you are, you are, they're going to say you are, you, or you were the savior. And yeah. when the books are open, no one's be able to escape because really all those who are at the judgment, uh, great right throne, the day of judgment, they're there just to receive their sentence to be condemned. There is no way where people are going to say, or, 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 or their plead, um, their plead is not going to say, uh, their plead is like, oh, Lord, give me another chance or I want to be here. Sorry, my headphones yeah. are just acting up. But the thing is that there, there's, that's it. It's done. There's no other chance anymore because your repentance should and your salvation was here, bought with the price on earth, not over there in the place of eternity. Right, right. That's true. And if God is a God, God is a good God. It's like if God is a good God, then He will punish anyone who's committed a horrible crime. Right. And I like, uh, you know, it's like here on Earth, if a judge 
a person says, well, God, I'm a good person. You know, I'm a good person, but that person uh, committed a horrible crime. They stabbed some people and they killed them. And they say, judge, I do good works. I'm a good person. And the judge will say, okay, well, that's great. But you know what? That still doesn't escape you from the crime that you did, which is this vile act of killing people. Right. And because that judge is good, he is going to go ahead and bring the rule of the law and say, because I am a good judge, then you will be sentenced to life in prison or whatever right. the sentence is. Well, the same thing with God. If you're, if people would say, well, I'm a good person. I knew you, like you said, that scripture, didn't we prophesy? We used to cast out demons. Well, because, but yeah, but you were a hypocrite or you did not follow in my ways because I am a good God. You will be condemned and away from me because I never knew you. You were just a hypocrite. Right. And one story that comes to mind is from the Bible. A uh, well-known story about David uh, when he committed sin with Bathsheba. Um, Nathan, the prophet, um, prophesied to him um, the sin he committed. And David still denied it, but then it came out to open. And he paid the consequences when um, his baby boy or his baby, um, baby yeah, newborn baby passed yeah. away. Yeah. Um, and I remember what David said, he cannot come to me, but I could go to him. And that was, that was really beautiful, but it was also something because, um, judge, God judged them accordingly. And exactly. And, you know, and David was a man, the Bible says that we seek the, the heart of God. And it shows that he was a man. Uh, he fell into temptation, but he repented. And after that, I mean, he was, uh, that's a beautiful story because, he fasted for the baby and he prayed and he locked himself in prayer. But uh, God, it wasn't God's will. Um, he, the baby died. And David said, well, if I can't see him here, I know I will see him later, meaning that I will see him in another yeah. place. And I know David, to be, he, became, he stayed faithful to God after that. Look, we all fall. We're not perfect. And I talk to people, Israel, you have too, and they always tell me, well, I'm not perfect. No one is perfect and God doesn't expect you to be perfect because he knows this. But right. what, you know, but the thing is that, and there's also scripture and I just, I don't remember uh, the, the words that, but if you fall, greater is the man who falls and gets up. But the one who falls and says, I'm not going to get up or not going to get up and they still continue their simple way, then that's yeah. the one that's going to perish. Yeah. All of us struggle with something. People struggle with stuff all the time, whatever it is. But if, but the thing is that to work your way to, mm -hmm have less of a struggle or to fight that but if you are struggling and let's say someone struggles for, for whatever you know um they 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 need to do whatever they can to avoid to have that struggle if it's someone who's struggling with drinking let's just say well you're not going to go to a party where there's a bunch of drinking because you know you struggle with that you're going to say i'm sorry but i can't go i can't yeah. go or like my friends you tell me well if someone's addicted to drugs well and you know that down the road or an alley, there's a lot of people doing drugs. He said, my friend told me, you're going to go all the way around to avoid that alley. You're not going to go through it because you know that's your struggle. That's your fight. Mm -hmm. When no one's yeah. perfect, man, people, who is 100% good to be in front of a holy God? Like I tell people, people tell me, well, I'm a good person. Well, I tell them, well, are you 70% good? Are you 80% good? Are you 90, 100% good? No one's 100% good where they could be in front of a holy God. It's only yeah. because of God sending his only son and is accepting Jesus Christ. Now that does not mean that right. you, you could go ahead and be sinning. That does not mean just because Jesus Christ and died on the cross and he forgave your sins. That does not mean you could be sinning because that's that false uh, grace kind of a uh, following gospel that, you know, people, some preachers preach like, Oh God already forgave me. Yeah. Go ahead and sin. Oh God already forgave me. You could go ahead and do this. Yeah. Go ahead and sin. Yeah. Go ahead and do this. That is false because that's being a hypocrite. That's what the Bible, what Israel read that, Depart from me, I never knew you. And it's like right. it's like in a uh it's like a um um a husband who's with the wife and the husband is constantly sleeping with another woman and he's having an affair with another woman and she said the woman says, Well he says, Well, I love you, but the woman the wife says, you know, I never knew you. You were always with that other woman, you were having an affair with the world, so to speak, as a Christian or so called Christian or so called person who says they're good, but you never had a relationship you know, truly with God, you can't have, you can't mix both things together. Yeah. 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 One uh, message I was hearing from um, uh, Bill Hagee, um, he was saying, like you were saying, you know, you get, you know, sometimes you get beat up, um, you know, and thrown down. And a lot of people, he was saying, yeah, I mean, uh, I like the way he would commented it. Uh, he said, yeah, 
oh, oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? Oh, what am I going to do uh, about this? Like uh, saying, oh, well, pick up, you know, stand up and fight again. Lick up, uh, pick up, uh, pick yourself up and lick your wounds and get ready to fight the next day. I mean, I love the way he put that because we got to fight spiritually. We got to be on a fighting battle with the, with the world, with the demon, with the enemies. Right. And we, we have to go ahead and come out winning because we're going to, we're, we're fighting with God and for God. And this whole, this whole thing about living is to fight. Because from the moment that you take your first breath here, you're, you're constantly fighting. You're fighting with thoughts. You're fighting with uh, negativity. You're fighting with uh, temptation. You're fighting with this and you're fighting with that. And the moment that you say you don't want to fight, well, what, what else is left? You know, you gave in into everything. You left your dreams on the table. You left your aspirations. You left everything. I was thinking, I was, you know, we all go through stuff and we're talking about David and my mom, my, I remember our mother, you know, we bring her up because we love her so much, but because she was a great example for us. And that's why we're here doing what we do. We go and evangelize and do stuff. And it's one thing that she wanted to do, but she couldn't because of her health. But hopefully we picked up the baton and we go ahead and do that. And your little boys, they will, we will pass up the baton if Jesus hasn't come and they could do that too. What I'm saying is that, the, she used to say, the more you look for God, the more the devil is going to want to attack you. And it's true because the more he was going to want to ba battle you. And I know we're still talking about heaven, folks, but what I'm saying is that to, to, to the, the fight, it, the, the Bible says that the violent, the, the violent take heaven by force or the kingdom by force. And it's true. You have to go in there and take the kingdom by force, meaning that you have to go in there and fight. And fight because there's going to be a lot of disappointments. There could be a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, discouragement. Yeah. And going back to the books about he you know, because we're, we're talking about heaven, not not um, everyone's going to go to heaven, but not everyone's going to stay there. Um, or heaven and the things that you need to know is that in the books there will be books there, and it will be written. Everything will be written of what you did, of uh, your your secret your secret things. Um, it says in Romans two sixteen. In the day when God will judge the secrets of man by Jesus Christ, according to my my gospel, that's what the Bible says. Um, in the books, it, it will also contain the times each person heard the gospel of salvation and the times that they rejected it. So no one's going to be able to say no. As a matter of fact, a lot of people will say, you know what, Lord, I do deserve uh, my sentence and I deserve to go to hell because one of the things that I believe will be shown is the, 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 the crucifixion when Jesus Christ was crucified for that person, for whatever that person's name, Bill, Sarah, Eric, I'm just throwing random names, and they'll, show, and they'll see the crucifixion of Jesus Christ being crucified, of him, him being beaten, of him being, uh, his beard being pulled, of him being spit at, kicked at, uh, and so beat up and carrying the cross and on the cross. And then people will say, I deserve it. I, I rejected you. Yeah. And they will not, they will be cast out to all of eternity. And people, people who say, well, if he's a loving God, why would he do that? But again, people, I'm telling you, if he is a loving God, listen to what you're saying. He will go ahead and do it because he needs to, he will do it because he needs to do it because go back to here on earth. Like I said, if a judge, if you if, if if the judge could be very loving, right? The judge is I'm a I'm a great guy, I'm a loving guy, I like this, you know, like this. But if that judge is good and they come and do something to your family, as an example, they rape your sister, your your mom, your or or do something horrible, you right. don't want that that judge to to do what needs to be done according to the law to 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 condemn that person to his sentence. If yeah. that judge says oh it's okay you know uh, they did this to your mom she says it's all right you know let them lose you're gonna feel that it's not right you're not a good judge you're not you're not uh, a justified judge and you're just doing what you want to do but god is not like that god will say because i am good this is what's gonna happen amen right that's true yeah i believe i mean i i agree with all that um and i know uh we as christians we need to go ahead and uh, submit ourselves to God, um, surrender ourselves completely to Him, and just race. You know, be we we gotta be bold. We gotta be courageous and um, and be soldiers for God. And being a soldier means you know uh, 
uh, sharing the word with somebody, preaching the word to somebody, planting the seed. So that way, one day, it might not be that day when you speak to somebody about the Lord, about uh, Jesus Christ, but it's uh, at least you could plant the seed and later on in life, they'll realize and open up their eyes and say, okay, now I understand that day when this, um, this gentleman or this woman uh, spoke to me about the, you know, about Jesus. Now I understand. Um, and their hearts will open right there and then or wherever they're at. And that's the thing, you know, like uh, a lot of people, um, I forget I was talking to you about this, uh, but a lot of people, they, they just, you know, when we've gone to the parks, like uh, over here in LA, MacArthur Park or um, other places that we've gone to, that people, when we pass out tracks and we talk to people, people go ahead and um, uh, most of them, they're very receptive. They say, hey, look, I want to give you this. I want to talk to you, have a conversation with them. Yeah. And they want, this is, oh, yeah, yeah, pray. You know, it's okay if you pray for me or, you know, I'll, thank you very much and so forth. And because people, most people want to be loved and they know that uh, Jesus Christ is ultimate love. And we just need to go out there and evangelize. So my thing is that, what, what's going on right now with this virus that's going on and unfortunately what's going on, you know, um, you know, with other things in the world, we need revival. We need a revival throughout from state to state to the nation of the United States. And we need people to be brave. We need warriors. We need people to go and evangelize because I don't, there's not a lot of evangelism like there should be like, like, they, like, that, like they, they used to be before. We need to be bold. We need to stop being afraid and to preach the gospel. And and the gospel, Israel, is going to go ahead offend people because why? Because it's the truth. Because the truth will always offend someone because they don't want to hear it. And it's their conscience. Like I've talked to people who are um, um, for same-sex marriage or for you know um, uh, homosexuality, and they don't want to hear it. And there's some people that know it they know the bible because they grew up in a christian home or so forth but uh, we love our brothers and our sisters you know and we just have a conversation and talk to them and it's because we love them you know it's because we love the person on the street and we want them to to not be separated from god from all eternity and be there at the great white throne but to be saved and to be at the judgment seat of christ to re yeah. see the reward of everlasting life yeah, we want to have we want heaven to be full. We don't want an empty heaven like you go to an empty stadium and you're just there, uh, seven people here or, or two people out there. Who wants to see? We want to see a pack. We want to see a full. We want people to go and rejoice and have the uh, have a party in heaven. It'll be a great time of worship. We don't yes. want an empty heaven. Who's gonna want to go to somewhere that's empty? <laughs> I mean, right? We want heaven to be full and full of uh, people to worship God. Yeah, and you know, like, uh, um, you know, Raihan Bonke used to say, you know, heaven full and he used to say heaven full and uh, hell empty. And he was to say, he used to say that uh, because he's an evangelist, he's to, uh, he, the Lord used him to win a lot of souls and he's already with the Lord. But he used to say, I know that's not a reality because, of course, there is going to be a lot of people going to go to hell because the Bible says that the road is narrow and, um, narrow to go to the lord but it's wide to go to um the other place of ca uh, condemnation which is hell but the thing is that more people in heaven uh to be in that place of peace and a peace of joy and so um once again um when people ask you if you have asked yourself the question like you know am i going to go to heaven well again everyone's going to go to heaven as israel and i have talked to but will you stay and live in heaven? Will you stay there? When they, when, where would you be? Where you, are you going to be at the great white throne? Or will you be at the judgment seat of Christ? Where are you going to be when you are, uh, when, when all the dead will be um, in that place of heaven to be judged either by the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne? You don't want to be at the great white throne. And once again, everyone, yes, will go to heaven. But not everyone will get to uh, stay and live there. But you right. want to stay and live there for all eternity with God forever and evermore. Right. So um, I hope you guys like this subject. You know, uh, we might uh, extend it, maybe do a part two. We'll see, uh, depending, you know, what people say, you know, or, or so on. Um, Israel, do you have anything else that you want to say before we um, finish this? 
Uh, no, well, I know uh, you're you're making some videos too, and uh, I'm making some videos. Um, and I just wanna, you know, invite all our, our followers and um, people that are tuning in to go in and um, check out our other videos. You know, we talk about other topics as well. You know, I'm, I'm gonna start uh, another topic about um, atheists uh, and does God exist? I know we talked about this, but it, it's something that I wanted to add on and I don't want to make the podcast long, but I made it a video on YouTube. So I'm going to be um, putting it on my YouTube channel, but I know you have some videos as well, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah absolutely. Like, uh, you know, if you guys like uh, this, you know, please press the sub uh, subscribe button uh, down below. You'll see the subscribe button and um, just go ahead and uh, I'll subscribe to you, this channel and then to Israel's channel. I don't know. Is yours ready? Are you still working on it? Do you know the name of the channel so people could go to it or, I'm still um, working on the, it. I could put the link on the on on this one if it's ready. But yeah, yeah, just you know, follow us and subscribe to us. You know, we we come and do this because we love you. We love you. And that's listening, and uh, because we uh, uh, we we want to spread the the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came and died for the entire world. We love you, and we will pray for you. As I hope that you will pray for us. And yeah. our messages are positive because they're all the good news, which is a gospel. So right. yeah, follow Israel um, when his thing is up. Um, we'll share it, and then of course you know you'll see our subscription button here. You can follow us. us. So hopefully we can um, uh, continue engaging, engaging with you in conversation. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna end it. We hope you guys enjoy this podcast, and we'll keep up uh, coming up with more podcasts um, and episodes. Subscribe, follow us, and um, on our. Um, podcast also not just on our youtube channel and then we'll keep you more updates so we're going to end this in prayer and i'm going to ask israel do a quick prayer so we could end this and then um, pray for those who uh are lost anyone who ha doesn't have a job because you know people are looking for a job right now and right. then um, also that they pray for revival and then uh, we'll end it okay father in the name of jesus we come to you giving you thanks for all the things that you have done and given us all the blessings that we have Thank you for giving us another opportunity to see the day of light today and keep blessing us with many, many days, many years to come so we could go ahead and spend it with our families here, our loved ones. I ask you for all these people that uh, are struggling uh, financially, those that have lost their jobs with this um, crisis that the, this whole nation and this whole world is going through. I ask you to help them and bless them abundantly to so they could help uh they could get back uh on their feet and and support uh their family their uh their household i ask you for those souls that are lost and they really need uh they really need uh your touch lord jesus so, uh i ask you to help reach out to them and help each and every one of us that know you to spread the word so they could go ahead and uh, come to you, surrender themselves, and we could go ahead and serve you. So that way, there could be more heaven, and more souls in heaven, and less in hell. Amen. And we ask you to help us and keep using us as instruments, as a vessel, so we could go ahead and preach your word. We ask you to help us, bless us, and uh, keep us safe and guarded, and cover us and protect us with your precious blood. Amen. 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 Okay, guys, thank you very much. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. God bless you. Bye. Thank you for joining us and for planting a seed in God's kingdom. I want to say a special thank you to all those that contribute so that we may continue with this ministry. You can click on the donate link to give now or visit tfwministries.org slash podcast for more information. And if you enjoyed this podcast, you can subscribe and share with your friends by clicking the share button and sharing it on your social media. Thank you and God bless you.